What's up guys, this is Riley from Hudson Motors here with our 1964 Ford F-250. I wanna give you guys a quick walk around and show you all the cool stuff that we've done to this truck over the years. Normally here at Hudson Motors, if you know us, we build, buy, and restore, and give away cool old classic trucks. This is one of our personal builds and uh, not something that we, we, we show off a lot. Definitely not a giveaway truck. Please, no, please, no. But uh, it is very cool and a very popular truck and we wanted to show it to you guys today, show you kind of all the cool stuff about it. Before we hop into it, this truck, like I said, is a personal vehicle. This is a 100% hobby build. So you might, there might be things that, you know, as you're looking at, it, you think, well, why, I wonder why they did this or why they didn't go and do anything like this farther. You know, you might have questions. And a, a build like this, that's an absolute hobby build. You know, you're never really done with them and you're always improving them, but you're not really building them to sell or, or give away like we do. We didn't build this truck to compete, to go to competitions. We didn't build it to sell it, to flip it, nothing like that. So it was kind of like a, let's do everything we want to do to it now. And then, you know, later down the road, if we want to do more, we'll do more later, but let's get this thing running and driving. And, uh, but regardless, it's still an awesome truck that gets a ton of attention and is ridiculously, ridiculously custom with more custom metal work than I could even, I don't even know how to quantify how much metal work is into this thing. So before we get into uh, the engine bay and drivetrain and all that kind of stuff, let's talk about the truck and the history of the truck and why it's so cool and why it's so rare in the first place. So this is a Ford 1964 F-250. This is a factory F-250 short bed four wheel drive, which did not exist. They did not make short bed four wheel drive F-250s. As far as my knowledge is concerned, maybe somebody else out there can correct me, but I've talked about this with a lot of other Ford experts like Solomon at the Ford era. It is believed, now Now there is no Marty report for 60s trucks. If you guys know what the Marty report is, it's a report for uh, 1968 and up Ford trucks on how many numbers and models they made. There are no Marty reports available for early 60s for the slick side era trucks. They were destroyed. And so there's no Marty reports out there from Ford to know how many numbers were made. Uh, but it is believed that Ford did not make a short bed four wheel drive truck, but that the Forest Service special ordered a number of short bed four wheel drive F-250s uh, as brush fire trucks. So when this truck was originally made, um, it would have had still a flare side bed on the rear, but had a big old water tanker in the bed of the truck and they would go around and put out bush fires with this truck. So this truck saw a lot of off-roading in its days. Um, now it looks completely different. So people may say, man, why did you take such a rare truck and go chop it up? And I was like, you know what, because we can and it's cool and it's fun and it's just a hobby, you know, and, and that's where when we built this truck, it was just totally hobby and it was fun and who cares? And the truck's really cool. So um, that's why the proportions are cool. And it looks like such a Tonka truck, such a toy because it's this big old lifted jacked it up truck on, you know, on this short stubby chassis and it's really cool. So, uh, but with that being said and about the history of the truck, now let's hop in and start talking about all the fun stuff that we've done to it. So under the hood of this big old beast is a Lincoln, so still Ford, but a Lincoln 460, like out of an early 1970s Lincoln 460. So this is a really, really, really good 460. This is pre-emissions 460. This thing is freaking rad, RV cam, 427 heads, like just a mildly built uh, 460. Uh, behind it is a C6 three-speed automatic transmission. In the engine bay here, really clean. You know, we didn't do anything crazy like tuck wires or anything like that, but the engine bay is very clean. Uh, we've got vintage air conditioning, a CVF racing uh, pulley kit up there. Uh, you'll see some Willwood Hydro Boost brakes, Hydro Boost kit, and then uh, powered behind that with some PSC um, power steering components to help push the big old 38 inch tires down below. Uh, but still in the hood, under the hood, very clean, very minimalistic, uh, but still is a truck and is usable. It's not a show truck or anything like that where we're, where we're scared of using it or anything like that, but very, very, very cool and very clean up under the hood. Also under the hood, uh, this 460 is powered, is fueled by a Holly Sniper fuel injection system. Uh, this is their complete fuel injection system and spark system. So this is their uh, HyperSpark um, ignition system and their distributor. I love the Holly Sniper for fuel injection on an old school motor. It, they make them run really great. And if you're familiar with tuning, you can make these things run like an absolute top. However, I will say that I don't think the HyperSpark is that great of a, of a product. I don't think it's worthwhile. I wouldn't do it again. Um, I think they're finicky and I don't think they really quite operate correctly and it's a lot of guesswork. In all reality, I think if you wanna do something like this, you do a Holly Sniper for the fuel injection and then you just grab an MSD 6AL, you know, and an MSD distributor and then you just run, you know, whatever spark advance, uh, timing advance that you want off of that rather than trying to mess with the Holly stuff, it's not that great. But um, besides that, I do love Holly and they they're, they make great products, but you know, you live and you learn and, and, and I'm here to just tell you my experience. So that's what I would suggest. In the front end, we decided to go with uh, all 
gloss black powder coat, so this is all gloss black trim. And we found these cool Super Duty emblems that would have come off of like a heavy duty truck, an F700 truck would have had the Super Duty emblems. And it was like, you know what, let's slap those on the hood, they're freaking cool. And, and people are like, man, I didn't know they made a Super Duty, they didn't. And, and for some people, this is like up badging. You know, you take a, a like a BMW 3 Series and you put an M3 badge on it. You know, this is kind of up badging, but it's fine. Uh, but still, 64 grill is the coolest of the slick side grills. Really rad grill. And then this bumper is the factory F250 bumper, but has been widened about six inches in order to fit these bigger F600 fender flares. And then up front, this is the original Ford brush guard. These brush guards are worth their weight in gold. They're really cool. There's a group of guys on Instagram. That we call ourselves the grill gang, you know, because when you have one of these factory brush guards you got to keep it and they're really cool so all powder coated black really nice looks great let's squat down and look at suspension for a minute now this might be one of the areas where someone might, might say you know why didn't you go and do super duty axles if we went through and all did all this work so up front we have a closed knuckle um, drum brake dana 44 and, and you know what your answer is you're probably right for not that much more work we could have just swapped them and i have a set of dana 60s at the shop that this truck's going to cena this year um, and so I don't want to go ripping into it before it goes to SEMA. Uh, SEMA right now from the time we're filming this video is about in three weeks from now. So after SEMA, we're going to swap in our Dana 60s and get rid of this closed knuckle front end. But still, it's a Dana 44 in the front. You might be thinking, man, those 38 inch tires, those are going to, that's going to blow that axle up. And if we were off-roading this truck a lot, absolutely it would blow this axle up. Uh, and the Dana 60 will make it steer better. However, we do have one ton steering up front and powered behind the PSC to help the, to help push those big old tires around works great. And uh, the Hydro Boost brakes, even with drum brakes, the Hydro Boost makes anything stop phenomenally. It's super confidence inspiring, but it is going to be nice to have disc brakes in the future. As far as suspension goes, these are uh, six inch leaf springs for uh, an F-250 four wheel drive, uh, but it's just leaf spring front and rear with just some regular old monotooth shocks. When we do our axle swap, we'll do some nice Bilsteins, just make it ride a little bit better, but really nothing that crazy in the suspension department. Uh, but again, because this was a hobby when we built it, it's fun to just build it, finish it, drive it, enjoy it, and then say, okay, we've enjoyed it for a year or two of driving. Let's take it back in and put it back under the knife. And that's kind of what we're doing now. So I'm excited to get it back into the axle swap. That's gonna be fun. You know, even though these trucks are, are ridiculously super custom, super custom trucks, they're still classics. You still tinker with them all the time. You're still fixing little things. You still have squeaks. There is no such thing as a finished classic truck. I don't care if you pay $300,000 to one of the top builders in the nation, your truck will always require tinkering. And part of owning a classic, we tell this to every single one of the people who, want, who win one of our giveaway trucks. Welcome to the classic truck game where you have to be prepared to tinker and have fun with your vehicle. If you don't like tinkering, then you're not gonna enjoy classics in my opinion. But I love it and so it's fun to just you know, improve it every day and drive it and say, okay, I've, I've, you, your list just kind of keeps growing on your phone and you just say, okay, like I gotta fix X, Y, and Z and, and it just is fun and, and you love your truck even more. And you, I feel like you trust your truck more as you fix and tinker more. So that's just my two cents on tinkering. So let's walk down the side here and talk about some of these proportions. Um, some other things that you'll notice as we go down the side, big old 38 inch Milestar Patagonia uh, MTs wrapped around 20 inch Method NV 305s. Uh, we're going to go up to a 42 inch tire. We have plenty of fender well opening in this F600 fender. Slick side trucks are probably my least favorite Ford truck of all the classic Fords. But as soon as you put these big old massive F600 fenders on them, it is so cool and it matches the body line so well. It just looks like a big old massive pre-runner fender made of steel and they're just so stinking cool and they bolt right up. So F600 fenders give you this massive opening that you can easily clear a 40 or a 42. So we're gonna go up to 42 so we can send off to SEMA and uh, it'll look cooler, that's for sure. It'll increase the, the Tonka truck X look of it. We've got more of the, of the spearhead trim running all the way down the side, which again might be a bastardization because they didn't make this trim for flare side forwards. This was a style side option only, but it was like, hey, why not? We're having fun, let's just have some fun with it. Some really cool Ford original factory mirrors. These are the factory West Coast Junior mirrors and they are so cool. This is a really cool three post design. They're cool and, they, and I think big trucks deserve big mirrors. I hate seeing a big lifted truck with little car mirrors. It doesn't ever look right. One of the questions we always get about this truck is the paint color. It is a wicked cool gunmetal green that we came upon kind of by accident. After we got all the metal work done on this truck, it was primered and it was sat in primer green for a long time. For probably about a year it sat in primer green. And then after we were after it was all said and done, we took it to the paint shop and we we're like, man, I don't know what else to paint it besides just that color. And so basing off the primer green, we picked a color and uh, the, the name of this color would be River Gum if you want it. And, and, and other people have used it on their trucks as well, but it's called River Gum. 
but it's kind of a custom milk, but custom mix, but that would be the closest color to it that you could find at a paint shop. It's river gum. But it's very cool. Gun metal green. You know, at nighttime it looks gray, but in the sun it looks green. It's really cool. So the gloss black is really, really, really red. When we first finished the truck, we finished it in satin, and then the satin green started to look chalky and look more and more and more like primer, less and less like paint. So then we repainted the truck, Cheyenne Ruther from Nefarious Customs. She repainted it about a year and a half ago, and then we uh, color sanded it, color corrected it, you know, did the three-step polish and then ceramic coated it to where this thing is just smooth like glass. It's super nice. Zero swirls in the paint just looks phenomenal. But the color, now that it's glossy, looks absolutely insane. As we keep moving back here, we'll flip around so you can see, but there's some more really cool, really custom things. Let's talk about this roof. This is my favorite part of the truck and what makes it so unique because I have yet to see another slick side pickup truck use this roof. This is an F800 fire truck roof and the roof is about eight inches taller in the middle than a factory slick side truck. It fits the dimensions and the size of this truck perfectly. It looks so stinking cool. It's got some factory glass marker lights, cab marker lights on the top, which is just so cool that they're made of glass and original, but the roof is humongous. Has a really cool piece of trim along the back um, that we did in black as well, but it is eight inches taller because a firefighter would have worn his helmet in this truck and didn't, want, and didn't want to take his helmet on and off to get inside his pickup truck, so they made the roof taller. It is so cool and you have so much headroom you could be six foot eight and sit in this truck and fit perfectly fine um, your, your knees might hit the steering wheel but your head would not you would have plenty of headroom and i think it just absolutely sets this truck off and sets it apart you'll never see another one like it but it is a ford factory roof from an f800 so really cool i will keep walking down the back here big old rear flare side fenders and a big old flare side bed so we always build our beds custom for these kinds of the trucks uh, flare side beds normally were puny they were too short and too narrow and so this bed is six inches wider and three inches taller than a regular flare side bed to put the bed roll right at the same width of the cab at the mirrors. So it still looks like a flare side bed. You still have a gap between the bed and the outside of the cab. You know, a style side bed would be the same width of the cab at the widest portion of the cab. This is still more narrow than that, but it's the same width of the cab at the windows. So it still looks like a flare side, but it is much bigger. This is probably the same size as a flare, as a style side bed. You know, and when you talk about bed dimensions on the inside dimensions, so really cool. But with that being said, you have to you have to shrink down your steps, so the flare side steps have to get shrunk down and rewelded in order to fit. And then these fenders are ginormous. Uh, these fenders are six inches longer and three inches wider, and then six inches taller as well. So these big old massive fenders are made to match the F600 fenders fenders up front. They're huge. They clear a 38 with ease, and will clear a 42. So we're gonna go up to a 42, so it'll clear absolutely with ease. So that's just too stinking cool. People ask all the time, like, where did you buy those fenders? Where'd you find those big old massive fenders? There's no mold for these or anything like that. These are steel. These are two sets of fenders. We buy two sets of flare side fenders, chop them, cut them, stretch them, do all that stuff to, to make them big. Luckily for us, we work with some great fabricators like uh, Zach Earth from Earth Defined, who just like, who are absolute wizards with welding and, and can make this kind of stuff look right. And then, you know, I paint and body, it gets made really, really pretty and really nice. But I wish someone sold these fenders because there's a lot of guys out there with flare sides who'd like to run big tires, but can't because they're stuck using puny little fenders. So no, you can't just buy these. Um, it would save me a lot of time if you could, but you got to make them. In the back, the first thing you're going to notice is that massive, massive wraparound rear window. And anyone who knows Fords and knows slick sides knows that that rear window is not factory. That is actually a unibody rear window. Ford, for I think two years, made a big back window unibody truck. It is an enormous, like, fishbowl back window. And you have to take a unibody and chop the window out and then graft it into your truck. So not only did we do the big cap, we did the unibody back window as well. And it is just, it's too freaking cool and so custom. And so that's gotta be that and the roof together. That's why I said there's more there's more metal work than I know what to talk about than, than we could quantify on this truck because of stuff like that. So the unibody back window is absolutely th the coolest thing that we could do um, because you get this big wrap around that nobody else has. So again, really cool. Um, behind the back window, you have this massive, massive roll bar. That is not made out of uh, tube. That is actually made out of four inch pipe. Plumber's pipe, you know, God bless Zach and Jason over there at the fine because they had to buy 90s and 45s in four inch pipe and miter and cut those down to make all the different compound bends to make that, that roll bar work. It is so heavy and so stout. If we flip this truck, it would absolutely save your life. It's so stinking heavy and so strong. So that's wicked cool. Along with the four inch roll bar, you also have the four inch rear bumper as well. So this is the same thing made out of four inch 
um, and then mitered and everything else along the way with some diamond plate in there as well. Uh, tailgate has also been stretched to fit. And then we always, on these flare side trucks, something my dad really loves is he loves these taillight housing protectors. I, I, they're just cool and kind of beefy, but still very cool. And then the one last little touch and, and homage, you know, back to the Forest Service is we have an original 60s Forest Service emblem. So this is real copper and will turn more and more green. You can already see it starting to turn green where the water would pull up. So really cool original emblem uh, that I have locked in there so nobody can steal it, but a very, very, very cool thing. Um, so that's it for exterior. As far as exhaust goes, this thing's running headman headers, ceramic headman headers and full stainless exhaust all the way out the back, true duels. Sounds insane, you'll hear it in a minute. Um, but let's go hop in the interior and go take a look at how great that looks as well because I love the interior in this truck. And with any truck this size, you gotta have the AMP Research running boards. They're the best, so very cool. In the interior here, I love this interior. Something I love at Classics is to have a, a painted dash like this. It's just so cool and so classic. So kept that, that river gum green coming through here on the dash. Uh, still with all of our, our gloss black powder coated pieces. Uh, we got a leather wrapped steering wheel. As far as gauges go, we're running the Dakota Digital RDX series, which looks like factory gauges and are wicked, wicked cool. They light up, but you still have this screen that'll tell you your speed and everything, but the gauge cluster still looks like a factory gauge cluster. So that's really cool. One thing that we did that I love about this interior is I hate that when you get a truck, nothing, not that I hate it, let me repeat myself. Something I don't like is once you've got a, rest, a restored truck, you know, they leave all the vent knobs and, and the cigarette lighter and all the extra accessories on the dash that you needed back in the day that you don't need anymore today. So that all got shaved and all we have is headlights, wiper switch and our ignition switch over here on the left hand side. So everything's over here and the rest of the dash is just perfectly, perfectly clean. Uh, under the dash down here, we've got our vintage air uh, AC system We're running the Gen 2 Super system. Um, and it's great black carpet and then our, our distressed brown leather interior headliner door panels everything including our little door pocket zipper little zipper cards which are really cool and then another one of my favorite things in here has got to be these power windows so we get these power windows from new relics and they have the window switches in the doors so they still look like factory switches and uh, I think the coolest part about the new relic system is that they take and modify a factory scissor style window regulator to accept uh, a power motor and so they go up and down so stinking fast but the switches work freaking great and they're awesome i did a steering column low car shifter and uh classic industries uh bench seat center console it's super comfortable this is the factory bench seat we tried to run other seats and nothing was going to work just with the seating position in here steering column position but the factory bench seat fits perfectly and doesn't block off your big old massive rear window so it's great it's not in the way of the window you get it all and uh and it, you just sit perfectly good you sit nice and low and again i have like what feels like a foot of headroom above my head here just a ton a ton a ton of room so that's awesome as well um love the upholstery love the interior love sitting in it love driving in it and uh, it's just a blast. So with that being said, let's uh, crank this baby over and go take her for a test drive. You see, so you guys can see just how great she sounds and how great she drives. So I'll tell you, the truck is driving absolutely great. However, uh, I wanted to put in some, some driving clips and everything, but we've got a random squeaky serpentine belt. It's a new serpentine belt, probably only a couple weeks old, but it's squeaking like a big dog. And I don't wanna kill your guys' ears on this video and have to have you listen to it. So uh, just, just trust me when I tell you it drives great, accelerates great, the 460 is awesome um, and makes plenty of power. So. It's a great driving truck, however, I don't want to kill your guys' ears. Uh, here, you can hear it for real quickly, but you hear that? Yeah, I don't want to do that to you guys all through this video. So, like we said, all classics have dingleberries, all, you know, they're you never ending tinkering, and we'll figure out why it's squeaking, and, and we'll fix it and keep driving it. So, but we'll go back now and just, uh, and just finish this video up. Alrighty, well, with that, you know, there's just, there's always dingleberries, and we just got squeaky belt, we'll fix it. It's not a big deal, keep driving it. Um, but with that, thanks guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope you like the walk around. Again, uh, I said it in the past, my, when my dad and I were doing this and we're building these trucks, like this is was all pure hobby for he and I, something to do together. And we weren't doing it to be the first people on the internet to do this or the or to be the first people on the internet to do, you know, to to, to do the big back window. It was just like, you know what, hey, what would be cool? Oh man, this fire truck cap would be rad or this back window would be so cool. These fenders would be cool. And it was just like, pure fun and that's what this truck represents for us we love this truck it's not for sale i don't think I, we would sell it if it wasn't for just an exorbitant amount of money um but you know just because we love it and it was fun and it was fun to just piece it together and it came together so cool so we hope you guys like it hope you like the walk around we'll do more of our personal builds in the future we'll space them out just so you guys can see them and see some of the cool stuff and maybe get some inspiration for your builds make sure you check us out at, uh, here on youtube check out our youtube channel as we're posting 
post multiple times a month and uh, you'll see our classic truck giveaways that we do. Uh, our next truck that we're doing after this is our, our 1984 uh, come and swap suburban so that truck's rad on 37 it's huge awesome so you're gonna you're not gonna miss that one check us out on instagram and facebook at hodson motors as we post every single day as we're working on these trucks and showing all the cool stuff that we can do to them and uh, and and helping you guys and we just love it it's a lot of fun thanks guys for watching and thanks for checking this one out make sure you like this video and subscribe to us here on youtube and we'll catch you on the next one see ya